Okay, we've finally come to the end of our math packet. Um, right now I'm working on page eight. And then when I finish with that, there's just two questions on the last page, page nine, so I'll do those as well. So let's start back with question number 19. A kindergarten teacher has 22 and a half cups of juice to be divided equally among her students. If each student is to receive one and a quarter cups of juice, how many students are there? And so right away, there are some key words in here. We see divided equally. And so that tells you that we're going to be dividing. We're going to, when you split things into equal groups, that's division. So we're gonna take the juice, we're gonna divide them into equal groups of one and a quarter cups, and then we'll see how many servings we can make, which would tell us how many students there are. So for this one, it's 22 and a half divided by one and one fourth. So there are a couple of steps here. The first thing we need to do is take these mixed numbers and turn them into improper fractions or fractions greater than one. And there's not a lot of room to work here, so I'm gonna move over to the side. Two times 22 is 44, plus one more is 45. So this will become 45 halves divided by four times one is four, plus one more is five, so this is five fourths. And I want you to notice that I kept that sign division. I know when we were in school, a lot of you were changing this to multiplication because you know that in order to divide fractions, you actually have to switch the operation to multiplication, but we're not ready to do that yet. The only thing I did was take these mixed numbers and turn them into these fractions greater than one. I didn't follow that keep switch flip routine yet, so I shouldn't be doing anything else except changing these to improper or great fractions greater than one. Now I can do keep, switch, flip. So you should have, and again, I'm gonna move over to have a little more space, 45 halves. Now you can switch and then flip four fifths. Before we multiply this, we should definitely look to do some simplifying so that we can have um, some smaller numbers at the end when we get our answer. I Right away, I'm noticing two and four. They're both divisible by two. So two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. So I've already made those numbers smaller. And then 45 and five are both divisible by five. So five divided by five is one and 45 divided by five is nine. So now when we go to multiply, it's much easier. Nine times two is 18, one times one is one. And so 18 over one is just 18. So the question said, how many students are there? There are 18 students. For number 20, a plumber has 28 feet of PVC pipe that he wants to cut into sections that are two and a third feet long. So how many sections of pipe will the plumber have? Well, if you think about, you've got 28 feet of pipe, so this big long piece of pipe, and you wanna cut it into sections that are two and a third. So we're gonna cut into sections or split into sections that are all the same length. So we're taking 28 feet, splitting it into equal pieces of two and a third. And so that should tell you that the operation is division. So 28 feet, and I'm gonna put the one under there since I'm working with fractions, divided into equal pieces of two and one third. 28 over one is fine to keep the way it is divided by, and the first thing I need to do is what I did up here, I need to take this mixed number and turn it into a fraction greater than one. So three times two is six, plus one more is seven. So seven thirds. And again, notice I kept the division sign. I didn't switch to multiplication yet because I didn't do keep, switch, flip. All I did was put the whole number 28 over one, and I changed this mixed number to an improper fraction. So now I'm ready to do keep, switch, and flip, okay? So we can multiply straight across. 
I am noticing though that 28 and 7 have a common factor and I think I'd rather simplify before I multiply. So, so uh, 28 and 7 are both divisible by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 28 divided by 7 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1. So 12 over 1 is just 12. So the pipe will be split into 12 sections. 21, which property is represented by the equation below? So what this is showing you is you have 2 thirds, and then you're multiplying it by 3 halves, and it equals 1. The step that's missing in here is 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, and so 6 over 6, or 6 divided by 6, simplifies to 1, which is what they have. So which property is that? That is the inverse property. When you multiply a number by its inverse, then you get 1 for an answer. The identity property would be um, when you multiply uh, a number by 1, you get that same number back. Remember, the identity shows you the same number back at the end. So if we had 2 thirds times 1 equals 2 thirds, where we get that same number back for the answer, that's the identity property. Distributive would involve parentheses, and commutative property is when you change the order of the numbers. So something like 2 times 3 equals 6, and then 3 times 2 also equals 6. So commutative says you can change the order. 22, Alexandria is evaluating the expression below. And I already put PEMDAS in here to save a little bit of time to show you, but which operation should be performed first according to the order of operations? So the order of operations, we use this word PEMDAS to help us remember the order. And we've done it two ways. We've written it across the paper and we've also written it going down the paper. So you can do either one, but the P tells us the very first thing we should do are parentheses. So look at the parentheses. In those parentheses is four minus one. That's the first thing we would do to solve this expression. So look at the choices. And I see here, H says subtract one from four. So that's the first thing you would do following order of operations. For number 23, which of the following coordinate planes correctly shows the point G, which is at 4, negative 5. And so just remember the 4 is the x value. It's telling you to move across. And because it's positive, you move to the right. The second number is the y value. Because it's negative, you're going to be moving down. So you need to go over to the right 4 and then down 5. So if I go over 4, down 5, I don't see a point. Over 4, down 5, over 4 down five, that is very close, but that is not correct, over four, down five, it's D. The What they did with this one is they reversed the numbers. They went over five and down four. So this point is actually at five, negative four, and the correct one should be at four, negative five. So these two are close. You just had to really pay attention to the details on this one. And the last two questions. Which number line shows two different integers with the same absolute value? So remember, you have to know absolute value means distance from zero. So whichever number line we pick, the two points have to be the same distance from zero in order for the numbers to have the same absolute value. So right away I see this is the correct answer. If I start at zero and I move to five, I'm five units away or five integers away. And then if I go back to zero and go to negative five, I'm also five integers or five units away. And re when we learned this, we just counted. We started at zero and went one, two, three, four, five, and then do the opposite. One, two, three, four, five. For G, so that's the correct one for G. I, the absolute value of zero, it's, it's zero spaces from zero, and four is four spaces away, so those are not the same. 
Um, this one, three would be three spaces away, and six would be six spaces away. Those are not the same. And for this one, negative two is two spaces from zero, negative four is four spaces from zero, and so they're not the same, so the answer is F. And then this last one, use the distributive property to write a numerical expression that is equivalent. So distributive property, we're used to seeing something like this, where you have a number on the outside, and then maybe, um, let's say, 10x plus three. And we would distribute what was on the outside by using arrows like this, and multiply the outside number by both of the terms inside the parentheses. This one, we have uh, an expression with two terms, and the distributive property that, property that they want us to use is to actually factor this and to take it from this and make it look in this form with the parentheses. So we did do this in class, and the first thing we had to do is we looked at the two numbers in front of the variables, those are called the coefficients, and we looked for common factors. So when I see 25 and 10, I know that they both have a factor of five. So we wrote it underneath like this. We said, okay, 25 can also be written as five times five, and 10 can also be written as five times two. So then you circle the common factor, so circle the five that they both have in common, and that's the number that we can factor out of this expression and put on the outside of the parentheses. So that five that we circled, I'm gonna put here, and then put the parentheses next to it. I know in between the two terms is gonna be a plus, so I can get all of that ready. And then what I have to do is just look at what's left. These fives that are circled, I've already taken out. It's over here. So what's left is a five, and then don't forget the variable. It's a five and an X, so you write that first. And then on this one, there's a two left and a Y. So you write that second. So this is the distributive property to show this expression written a different way.